During a recent episode of the Backyard Ecology podcast, Shannon had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Doug Tallamy about a wide variety of subjects. During their discussion, the topic of climate change came up and whether we should be actively moving species to preserve them from the impacts of climate change. Dr. Tallamy had some interesting insights into this subject, but before we get to that, I would like to point out that Dr. Tallamy does have a new book that just came out called How Can I Help? Saving Nature With Your Yard, which is a compilation of 499 questions that he has gotten over his career and his answers to them. This is a super cool format and contains a ton of useful information, just like all of Dr. Talamay's books do. This is another must-have book for any backyard ecologist. I will put a link to it, along with links to Dr. Talamay's other books in the description. Now let's listen to what Dr. Talamay has to say about climate change and relocating species. It's something that I've been getting asked about a lot more often recently, and that is thinking about climate change and how do we, or should we, be thinking about climate change as we're trying to create these thriving backyard ecosystems and planting native plants and doing all these things? Yeah, that, that is a common question these days. Um, usually what people want to know is, should we be planting plants from the south up north because the planet's going to warm and they'll be happy in 100 years? That's called assisted migration. Uh, and... I'm not a big fan, and I'm not a big fan because the planet is not gradually warming. What's happening, and it is if you average everything out, but what's happening is climate is becoming more variable. So the jet stream's going, and when it goes up, it's warmer than it ought to be, but when it goes down, it's colder than it ought to be. And, you know, we're southeast Pennsylvania. We have had a very cold winter this year. Um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana had nine inches of snow and it got down to nine degrees. The jet stream dripped down. A couple of years ago, there was a huge freeze in Texas that, that killed even native plants all the way down into Mexico. If we start moving Southern plants up, they're gonna have to experience those the polar vortex that comes every single winter now. Uh, and they're not gonna make it, they're gonna die. There's that and then there's also if we, it depends on how far you move these plants. Moving them a little bit is, you know, that's okay. But if you move them beyond the community of, of animals that have co-evolved with those plants, you're removing its ecological uh, function. It's, it's the advantages. We compared, now this is, this is not a north-south, it's an east-west, but we looked at red oak the productivity of red oak in terms of supporting insects in Portland, Oregon, where it's used as an ornamental plant quite a bit. Of course, it's from the east with its productivity in Pennsylvania. Uh, in Pennsylvania, it's one of the top producers, you know, supports hundreds and hundreds of species. In Portland, Oregon, nothing touched it. It's a it's a ornamental plant there, not a, a single bar on any any leaf. Same plant, practically the same, the same uh, latitude but it's totally removed from the ecosystem in which it evolved. So if we do that, it's, it's like introducing a, a plant from Asia. It's, it's not functioning very well. We compared 16 species of oaks in this area in terms of their, their uh, ecological productivity. The only two that underperformed were oaks that were planted too far north. So willow oak and uh, water oak are both planted a little bit farther north than their, their um, natural range. Where we did this study, uh, they supported some stuff, but not nearly as much as the oaks that, that belong here. So that's what we lose when we start moving, moving plants around. It's controversial. A lot of people disagree with me, but that's what I think, at least today. I do change my mind sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my, always been my thoughts on it too, with it. But I think that brings up another point that I think often gets missed. Um, I know a lot of people don't think about it that I talk to um, until I point it out is that native doesn't mean native everywhere and that oh, you can yeah. have native plants to to one part of the country and that same species isn't native to another part of the country. I mean, East right. Coast, West Coast, that's a pretty big difference, but it doesn't even have to be that. It can be within the Eastern U.S. even. Yeah. Just, just you want to stick within your eco region. You know, as you go up a mountain, you're going to get different plants. In Kentucky, you've got mountains 
They're not like oh, yeah. the Rockies, but you get mountains. If you take plants from the, the top of the mountain and plant them in the valley, it's a very different uh, situation. So, yeah, we're not making, we're not creating a native plant museum where you collect natives from all over the country and say, okay, it's native. It's native where it function as a native. <laughs> and, if, and if it's, if it's outside that area, it's not, not native. Yeah, that's, that's what I look at too is, is it native to, functions natively within that ecosystem. I think Dr. Ptolemy had some excellent insights into a very complex situation, as there are a ton of variables at play when it comes to relocating species. So what are your thoughts on this? Let us know down in the comments. Dr. Ptolemy covers a wide variety of subjects in the podcast, including how he transformed the land around his home. And if you would like to watch it in its entirety, you can check it out right here, and be sure to take some time and enjoy the nature in your backyard.